Hello, Internet. Mike Byrne here from MMOBomb.com, bringing you another first look video. This time it's for Spellbreak, the survival but more battle royale game that just released today, September 3rd. Uh, developed and published by Proletariat Incorporated. Now, this game is available for PC via the Epic Game Store and PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch with full cross-play, full cross-progression, all of that good stuff already in the game. We're going to spend about 15, 20 minutes or so checking the game out, giving you our first impressions of what's going on in the game. Now, a lot of this is going to be very, very familiar for most of you that have played Battle Royales. We'll have emotes, customization as far as skins and things like that go. But we're going to jump right into gameplay here after we go and check where our key bindings for emotes actually are. All right, there we go, G. Okay, good. So we're going to jump in game. Now, upon launch here, you'll notice the chapters uh, icon at the top center of the screen is grayed out. We'll come back to that in a second when we're covering menus. Uh, and you can only queue up in squads of three. Solo and duo queues will be available, but right now they are locked. So we're going to jump in. And when you do, you pick one of six classes, basically. And that determines which gauntlet your character wears on their left hand. So, for instance, we'll be playing the Pyromancer. So we'll have a fire gauntlet on our left hand for the entire match. Finding another gauntlet in the match, though, will actually put it on our right hand and start mixing up our abilities. And that becomes one of the key focuses for the game of Spellbreak. It's this sometimes chaotic, wonderful clash of elements, uh, whether it's your own abilities, your teammates' abilities, your opponent's abilities, to outwit and outlast everybody else on the battlefield. You know the drill by now. So we're going to go into a lobby here. We'll come back to the menu and talk about different traits and uh, cosmetic items in the shop after a match here. But I want to take you through some gameplay while we wait for the lobby to queue up here and uh, talk to you about the user interface. Notice that you do have a map where we can pick our drop-in point, and so all three of us randomly queued into this squad together. We're going to end up taking the same point and jumping here just... Uh, just northeast, or I'm sorry, northwest of the lowland outpost. I do have two quests in the upper left-hand corner of the screen that you can see there. You start with three. I've just happened to complete one. Stick, sticking with typical battle royale tactics, the game is going to throw us in, and we have a little bit of control over where we're going here. We're just going to slam into the ground, though. There is no parachute or glider or anything like that. But one of the customization features, as I'm sure you can imagine, is the trail behind us. You'll earn them in-game, and you can buy some from the cash shop, I'm sure, as well. But before we get into the gameplay, let's take a look at the user interface. Upper right-hand corner, you, of course, see our mini-map with the timer, the number of kills that I have, obviously zero right now, and the number of players in a match. That key is number 42. That's going to be 14 squads of three to queue up in a match. In the upper center of the screen, we have our compass. Fine, great, you're all familiar with this. Lower left-hand side, we see in the lower left corner our entire party, my bar obviously being the biggest one at the bottom of my party's bar. Now, it's a little hard to see because I don't have a shield yet, but the uh, you can kind of see it on my second teammate there, the blue bar above the orange one. There is a shield or, or an armor bar, and then the orange bar is your actual health. Below that, you see three icons, an amulet, uh, a belt, and boots, of which I've just picked up two of different rarities. So these are stat modifiers. The belt is what actually enables you to use your potions and additional armor pieces that are in the lower right-hand corner of the screen in the four hotbars. So I don't have a belt right now, which means although I've picked up a minor healing potion or two, I can't actually use these yet because technically I don't really have the ability to carry them. They do also offer stat modifiers, which is why rarity matters in just about everything you pick up. Notice I've picked up a blue amulet and green boots. So I'm getting mild stat modifiers, green being uncommon, white being common, green uncommon, blue rare, purple legendary, and orange is a legendary or a mythic, if you will with corresponding stat increases as you get better and better rarity of items. 
Now, we've already found a second gauntlet. It's not the ideal one that I really want to run around with because I do have a quest right now to deal wind damage. But in lieu of not having any second gauntlet, I went ahead and picked up a rare lightning gauntlet. So you can kind of see the U, uh, the UI in the bottom center, how it plays out. You've got two abilities on the left of the center. That is your left mouse click and the letter Q. So the left mouse click is my fire gauntlet's basic projectile, fireball, where Q is the pyromancer's uh, specialty ability, in this case, a flame wall. These abilities will level up as you go, and then they'll add different modifiers to them. For instance, at max level, throwing a basic fireball with the left mouse button will then also cause that fireball to explode into four smaller projectiles. So there are modifiers to these abilities as you level up. Conversely, on the opposite side of that center icon, you can see that right mouse button and E now do something as well. That's because I did pick up the lightning gauntlet. So I have its primary attack on right mouse button and its specialty attack on E. All of these can, of course, be customized in the key binding if you want. Now, you can mix and match the elements to your desire. Picking up a more rare fire gauntlet will let you upgrade your fire gauntlet, but since we're a pyromancer, we will never be able to ditch the fire gauntlet. Any other gauntlet we pick up would automatically be swapped for the lightning gauntlet we're wearing on our right-hand side. These abilities also do combine with each other in various ways that will be worth taking the time to figure out what works best for you if you were running solo and how can I use my abilities to complement those of my teammates seeing what they're using? For instance, if you're running with a pyro blast and you have your fire gauntlet on your left hand and on your right you decide to put a toxic or poison gauntlet, that poison gauntlet gives you an ability to generate a poison cloud in an area. And by itself, it does some damage over time poisoning a character. But if you pop that cloud somewhere and you hit it with a fireball, you can burst that entire poison cloud for additional damage. Other elements combine in other fun and creative ways that sometimes get a little chaotic and sometimes can be totally accidental when you're in a fray of five, six, or seven players all battling in one area. In the dead center bottom of the screen, we have our rune. Again, all of these, like gauntlets and our boots and belt and amulet, have rarities that give them more and more effects as you find more and more rare ones. In this case, we're going to pick up... Hey, nice find. We're going to pick up and change our rune to a legendary dash rune here. So it's orange, ultimate rarity here for us. And this particular one, upon pressing shift, will give us a very, very speedy dash ability. Other abilities that you can get from runes include the wolf rune that's going to allow you to let loose a awesome sound effect howl uh, in the game and will reveal enemies that are nearby through walls. You have the ability of short-term flight. You have the ability to go invisible. There are a number of runes that do different things, some of which you may find to be a little more overpowered than others in certain situations. Obviously, flight is a great one to have as early as you can, but not as beneficial later in the match when the ring starts enclosing and making it a tighter and tighter and tighter fit for combat. Not much point in having a flight rune at that point. I've opted now to switch mine to an invisibility rune, and unless I find a flight rune pretty soon, I think we're just going to stick with the invisibility rune. Finishing out the UI on the right-hand side in the lower corner, we've already alluded to the four-section hotbar where you can pick up a number of different items throughout the game, whether they be small heal potions, large heal potions, uh, small or large armor increases. These are all consumables that you can drink and then over time, of course, regenerate health or regenerate shield, whatever you need. And there are some other consumables you might find along the way. Just above those, though, you see three little icons, you know, a purple, a yellow, and a bluish icon. These represent, and we'll get back to this in the menu when we're done with this match, these represent the three different traits that you bring to the match. Now, traits are specific to a class. Since you have the option to switch classes, you do have the option to customize the traits for that particular class. You don't set them, and then that is the traits you're going to use for whatever class. So you do have to remember, if you swap to a new class, go take a look at your traits to make sure the ones, they're the ones you want to use. Now, I just happened to find an basic, uh, basically an airdrop here 
So uh, we go ahead and get a nice chunk of legendary equipment, which should help us out. Notice around these three trait icons, again, we'll get more into actually what traits are and what they can do when we get to the menus after this match. There are three dots. And around my purple and yellow one, I have all three dots filled in. But around that blue one, I only have one. These three things, by the way, represent mind, body, and spirit. So that's kind of like the lore behind what's going on. As we've been playing, in some treasure chests, we've found scrolls of body or scrolls of mind or scrolls of talent. And by reading those, you start filling in those three circles around each individual trait icon. And what they do is empower the ability itself, making it more effective or easier to use or a lower cooldown if it's something that's passive but on a cooldown timer or has a certain proc. But they also influence your stats overall. You've seen me floating around here with spacebar to jump, but then holding spacebar to do a little float. And in the center of the screen under the crosshair, you see this little bar of some type of resource going back and forth. That's your mana bar. It's not on screen permanently by default, but you see it when you do something that costs you mana and as mana is regenerating as you see me flying around here. So you have a little bit of a hover, a little bit of a flight uh, mechanic, which makes the map a, a lot quicker to traverse and gives the game a lot more verticality than some other battle royales typically have. The downside of this is that it is linked to mana, which is also what you're using to fire your projectiles from your gauntlets or trigger your specialty attacks from your gauntlets. So in the heat of battle, not only are you managing your mana and resources for the offensive, what abilities you're going to use, but also there's a little bit of simultaneous management of the same resource when you're thinking defensively. How am I going to jump or fly out of this mess that I'm in right now when I also need to be able to fire a fireball? Notice that we have just leveled up for the final time there, so you can see that my conflagration skill is now online. When I cast a fireball, it will then hit the ground, cause some fire that can cause some uh, uh, damage over time if you stand in it, uh, but will also burst. Now, most of this match, we haven't had to do combat at all. Our squad has been searching around. Now we finally find some opponents, and we're all the way down in the eight people left mark, eight or nine people left area of the, the game. So we're in the final throws of this match already. A lot of time was spent just us looking around and gearing up. I will tell you, I've played about a half a dozen matches of this now, some of them on stream earlier today, and then this one for the first look. The matches are a little faster than most Battle Royales, even when you come in first place and you're the last squad or last person standing. The battles do go faster. It's a nice touch. Uh, it's a very quick jump in and jump out Battle Royale if you need that. It does get a little more chaotic, though, than other Battle Royales because... Since all of these spells and elements interact with each other, there is friendly fire. So firing a fireball into an opponent while somebody else is standing next to them could potentially damage them too. Throwing a fireball right in front... Oh my god, look at that firewall. He just got ripped apart by that. That was great placement on that Q ability firewall there. Uh, anyway, putting fire on the ground, even my own... Uh, will cause me to take damage if I then in turn step in it. So it can get very chaotic in battle sometimes, but it's actually a lot of fun for me. I enjoy it. It might not be everybody's cup of tea, though, when you know your other battle royales you're used to not having to really worry about where your teammates might be standing or what they might be doing because you can't damage them to begin with. Now, we're taking advantage of our invisibility cloak as well. Notice that I've disrupted somebody right there. That basically means I have killed them, but they aren't out of the game yet. They're a hovering little spirit. If I can find them and uh, eliminate them, then fine. I will get all the loot that they are uh, wearing on them when they die. But if their teammates find them, they can be revived over time. So once you're downed, you're not necessarily out. You could be revived by a teammate. Now we use our invisibility cloak and come up and just drop fire on both of them from a very close distance and then we'll disappear and head off into the woods again. Now my teammates aren't really all that close to me as far as being in this fray. It seems like they're getting 
uh, bombarded over down the hill here by somebody else. So we're going to kind of bring everybody back into one place. Got to hover over my own fire. My shields are almost gone here, and now they are gone, so we're going to start taking health. Notice that one of my teammates in the lower left is downed. You can see that it's a yellow bar that is ticking downward now. So they are a little spirit floating around, hoping for a res and hoping not to be exiled by another player. I've disrupted another player, but again, they are not out. I did exile this person, so they are fully gone. And we're going to try and get this person here as well. It's funny. So I streamed this game today on MMO Bomb's uh, live stream. We do it every Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. We got the walls closing in, so we're going to have to move. Uh, on twitch.tv slash MMO Bomb. And the game did just come out today, and I had not taken part in any closed beta or anything, so I had no experience with the game. Uh, I have come in second and third in Battle Royales many, many, many times. Uh, I came in first with my squad and was the lead on exiles and assists. Uh, and all in all, we have played six matches, uh, and I have won almost. I have won half of them, three out of six. So it's actually a battle royale that I'm so far right. It's brand new, right? There's going to be people that are just going to become so pro at it that they'll eliminate me in a second. But I haven't been playing all that badly, which is odd for me. So it was a totally new feeling <laughs> to sit there and play a battle royale and not just be sublimely awful at it to be I, holding my own not the best but able to hold my own the effects in the game i love this art style it's kind of that cell shaded esque look that you see from zelda breath of the wild or maybe in the free to play realm it best be compared to there we go two exiles and two assists and that's the best on the team there too uh, maybe compare it to Genshin Impact, that kind of a look. In chat on stream, somebody said it kind of looks a little like Fortnite, uh, too much like Fortnite for their taste. And while I can see that point, maybe a little cartoony with a dulled down cal uh, color palette, uh, I still th tend to think that it leans more towards the Breath of the Wild uh, or Genshin Impact art style. The game so far is a lot of fun to play. I do have some gripes about it, but they're more menu-based, so we'll get to those in a second. Now, we have ranked our mage up five. That is our personal profile. We are a mage, and as we level that up, we will earn rewards, mostly gold, which is the in-game and cash shop currency. They are the same thing here. I have 200 in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, you can see. Uh, so they're both joined. I actually like that. Um, but mostly through leveling up, you'll get gold, sometimes emblems and other pieces of uh, cosmetic gear and things like that. There are 100 levels currently for the mage profile. There are 20 separate levels for each class, giving you their own rewards as they go up. And when you see that in the screens, it looks kind of like a, a battle pass screen, but there is no battle pass in the game, at least not yet. Not yet. I assume at some point there will be it is a battle royale after all. Now let's go through some of the menus here and talk about some things in game. Gameplay wise feels nice and smooth, nice and crisp. The music is phenomenal. I need to call that out. I've absolutely loved some of the tracks in this game. As far as the gameplay goes, again, it can be chaotic. I didn't have any performance issues, frame rates or anything like that going on. It does feel a little floaty at times. It's out of beta, it is launched, so maybe that will change, but it's kind of unlikely it's going to change quickly or dramatically anytime soon. All right, so let's go through the menus. Taking a look first at our collections, this is where most of your costume and cosmetic items are going to sit. First off is your outfit. Now, it, that's not just a clothing skin. That is your entire character. You'll pick one of these at the outset after you do the training and practice modes, which are the only two other modes in the game, by the way. And they change your entire character, whether that be from male to female to a totally different look here. So just equipping this outfit here totally changes the character. So you'll pick one and then you'll earn some more along the way. Artifact is, I believe, your cape on the back. I don't have any of those yet. Afterglow is when you're floating through the air. Conversely, you have cloud burst for when you're landing. A few emotes that you'll get right off of the bat. A triumph hand wave is the one you'll start with. Now, just like Destiny and other games, you have both a banner and a badge. So you can see in the uh, Magic Man banner there. You've got the flame background with the flame next to it, and no titles yet. 
Mastery is where you're going to keep track of all of your stats. As you can see, I've been playing the Pyromancer. I stuck with that because that was what they played in the tutorial. So we had a little bit of an idea of what it was going to do along the way. And my Pyromancer is rank 4. You can see that there, while every other class is still rank 1 because we've never played them. Off to the right, you can see the rewards that we will get for the next two ranks up with our class, our our class and our rank. So we rank up to five with our uh, Pyromancer. We'll get that first reward when we rank up our actual profile, which is just above this list of classes where you see Magic Man rank five there. We'll get that award on the right-hand side as, as well. And overall, across the top of the screen, you can see some overall stats as we go there. How many matches you've played, how many exiles, how many assists, etc., etc. Taking a look at the rewards panel here, this is one of my gripes. This kind of is a pain in the ass to get into to see what your rewards are. Mousing over them on the previous screen does not tell you what they are. Um, and even going into this menu, it really doesn't. You click gold, and I believe it's giving you 50 gold each time, just based on the math that, that we've been seeing. But it doesn't tell you how much gold this is giving you. And this is where, I, like I said, you can see kind of the outline of what might be in the future a battle pass. But there's nothing to pay for here. Looking at the individual classes itself, you see the same thing. And I wish there was more information on this screen. And I also wish that it wasn't hidden three screens in. You have to go to Mastery, then see all rewards, then go to Pyromancer. It's kind of a pain. Friends menu functions exactly as you'd expect. And then you have your news panel for anything new. Notice that chapters in the middle is grayed out. You cannot access it. That is going to be their like lore content, like kind of questy uh, content that's going to be added later. If you want more information about the lore of the game and maybe a glimpse of what is going to happen with chapters, you want to check out the Discord. In the shop, we take a look at a couple of things that are available right now. The starter pack is also available if you want to purchase that, although you will find that in the gold tab when you're playing through PC on the Epic Game Store like I am. You can purchase it for 600 gold or for 499. When you're purchasing gold, whether it's uh, in little bundles here or not, it's basically one gold per penny. $10 will get you 1,000 gold, although you do get bundle discounts when you buy bigger and bigger. That means when you're looking here, things like these featured skins are about $12. A common emote is about $2. And in six matches here, we have farmed up 200 gold to give you an idea of what the farm rate on these things are. One of the other gripes I have on the main menu is picking the, the quests. You, while you can see your objectives very clearly, again, I don't see the rewards. What am I getting for those? When you come in to actually play a Battle Royale match, this is where you'll select your talents. You have a total of six points, and notice that there's a point indicator in the upper right corner of each of my three talents, showing me how many points this talent will take. In the bottom screen, you can see all the different talents that may be available. Now, taking a look, you can see that we need to level up a particular class to open up Spell Slinger, and then if we use that trait, it'll be worth one of our six points. So I've got Vital Stone in here as my spirit one, which is a bit of a, hey, if you're first time disrupted, you're brought back with limited health. Those traits are going to pick and mix any way you want, but you might have to level classes you're not interested in playing to actually open some of them up. And that's a downside for me. I'm not a fan of that. While squads are three, like I said right now, you can only queue as a squad of three, and it'll match make for you. You can't do solo or duo at this time, but again, that is coming. I find it odd that things like chapters and solo and duo are missing from what is considered a launch version of the game. I would have been fine with those missing in a closed beta or even an open beta, but it is weird to me that some of those things are missing from an open launch. And some of the functionality of the UI, like not being able to mouse over these quests to tell what my rewards are, whether they be gold, experience, or, or something else, and having to dig in the menus for some of my future rewards, I find that a little aggravating. So I hope that stuff will change. 
Overall, I'm really enjoying Spellbreakers. Again, I only have one day worth of experience playing it, and I'm sure that I'm a little bit uh, skewed because I happen to be okay at it in the matches that I've played so far. I don't know how long it'll stick. I am interested to see what they'll do with the chapters mode, and I'd love your opinion on it in the comments below. Let me know, are you going to play this? On what platform? What do you think of it overall? But... It's got a solid start from me. I give it a solid thumbs up for now with the reserve reservation that I might change my mind a little later down the road after maybe the luster of winning a few matches in a battle royale game has worn off for me. This is Mike from MMO Bomb saying stay safe and we'll see you on the servers.